Unity joints are awesome. With them you can make your game a lot more fun and realistic. For example, you can add some custom ropes, chains, you can make realistic wheels and suspension for your cars, you can add some moving and rotating platforms for your platformer and a lot more interactive stuff. And if you don't know how to use the Unity Joints 2D, don't worry, I will show you now. So I have just two squares and on both of them I have a rigid body 2D with the basic settings and a box collider because you probably want to have some collision on these objects. Then we can go on to one of these objects, add component, joint, 2D. And you can see that there is many joints, but don't worry, I will explain all of them to you. All of the joints have some things in common. One of them is the connected rigid body, which is like a parent for the joint. So when I have a distance joint to D, the connected rigid body will be a rigid body to which it will try to maintain the same distance because it is the distance joint. So I can connect, for example, the square. And now you can see the green line here, which is telling us that it will try to maintain the same distance from this connected rigid body. Another thing in common is the anchor and connected anchor, which is just telling us where the center of the object is. Then we have a break force. So when we apply a bigger force than the break force to the object, the joint will just break. It will remove the component. First joint is the fixed joint, which connects two game objects controlled by rigid body 2D physics to keep them in a position relative to each other, so the game objects are always offset at a given position and angle. So we just have these two objects, one of them has the fixed joint, and you can see that when I play the game, yeah, it does what it's supposed to, they are staying in the same relative position to each other. There is really not a lot you can do with the fixed joint, I have set the first square's rigid body to static so that it is not moving, and we can try to play with the damping ratio and frequency properties of the fixed joint, which are just changing how the rotation will look. So we can see that when I have the frequency on one, it is kind of slowly trying to get to the original position. And when I set it to something higher, yeah, you can see that I'm not even able to move it because it is returning really quickly. We can also try setting the brake force. So I can try setting it to something like 20. And now when I push into the object, it just destroys the joint and the object falls. Next is a distance joint, which again connects two game objects and keeps them a certain distance apart. So again, on the first square, I have set the rigid body to static and you can see that the second object is just trying to maintain the same distance. What you can do is untick the auto configure distance and set your own distance, which is pretty useful. You can also tick max distance only, so that now when I try to push it up, you can see that it is able to go into a lower distance. And that's pretty much it for the distance joint. If you don't want the object to be rotating, you can easily just go to the rigid body and freeze the rotation, so it looks like that. Friction joint connects game objects and reduces both the linear and angular velocities between the objects to zero, so it slows them down. Now I have the maximum force on the friction joint set to one, so that when I push into the object, only one of them is moving. But when I set it to something like 100, you can see that both of them will be moving, but the second one will be moving at a slower speed. When I set it to something like 5 and push into the object, you can see that this one is moving quickly, but this one is moving really slow because it is adding some friction to it. And with the torque, it obviously works the same, so when I try to rotate it, the second one will be rotating slower. Hinge joint allows a game object to be attached to a point in space around which it can rotate. This one is pretty useful for the ropes, chains and all of that stuff. I have made a chain from the gears, like you can see here. How I made it, it is pretty simple. On the first one I have no joint. On the second one I have the hinge joint, which is connected to the first square. Then on the third I have another joint, which is connected to the second. And 
the fourth I have another joint which is connected to the third, so just a chain of the hinge joints. I can try pushing into it, you can see it is moving pretty realistically. This joint is a bit more fun because you can actually control it through C sharp. So I can for example tick use motor, now when I go under the motor I can set some speed of the motor so you can see that it starts rotating. Then we can also tick use limits and we can assign the lower angle and the upper angle which you can see that is signalized by this green circle. So we can set your own limits of the joint. Pretty useful. Just a quick reminder that I can also teach you individually anything about Unity, Bolt or C Sharp because I just can't fit all of the information into these videos or I can also help you with your personal projects or with the features you are trying to implement. So feel free to reach out to me and we can have an individual lesson. One hour lesson costs 10 euros and is on Google Meet. The relative joint connects to game objects to maintain in a position based on each other's location. So when I push the second square, you can see that it is trying to get back to the original location. Here you can play with the maximum force, so how quickly it will be trying to get to the original position, with the offset, and again we have the brake force and brake torque. It is pretty much the same as all of the other joints, it just has some properties from one joint, some properties from another joint, and so on. Slider joint allows a game object controlled by rigid body physics to slide along a line in space. You can see that the object is sliding along the line, you can set the angle so that it is going horizontally or across some other axis. You can tick use motor so that it is moving automatically without other objects pushing into it. You can also assign some translation limits for the lower and the upper translation, which is what I'm actually using here. It is just limiting the movement of the slider joint. I'm actually using the slider joint in my Jump King Light game to create a pretty realistic pogo stick, so feel free to watch it if you are interested. Another one is a spring joint, I think that the name says it pretty well. It is connected to some object as if by a spring. So you can see that this could be used for some platforms in your platform game. You can obviously change the distance, which it is trying to keep from the original point. Change the damping ratio, frequency and all of that stuff, you can play with it. And you can also freeze the rotation if you are making some kind of platform. Target joint is a joint that is trying to follow some target, so we can untick the auto configure target and set its target and you can see that it moves to the point where I set the target. You can also change the maximum force so that it is moving slower. Yeah, like this, now it feels kind of like the spring. You can play with the frequency, damping ratio and again we have the brake force. Wheel joint, as the name says, can be used pretty well to create some realistic wheels for your car. You can see that we have some suspension and a motor, so we can tick this motor and we can make the wheel spin just like that. You can try playing with the damping ratio, the frequency and all of that stuff, it's nothing too complicated. And this joint can be also pretty well controlled by a C-sharp script. And one last tip for you coders, it might be obvious for you, but for me it took me some time to figure this out. So when I have a joint, I have named it Pogo joint, and I can for example access the motor of the joint and set the motor speed, you might want to do it like that, just accessing the motor and setting the motor speed, but you can see that this does not work. Instead what you need to do is create a new variable for the motor, which type is joint motor to D, assign the motor of the joint to it, then set the motor speed of the motor for which we have created the variable, and then assign the motor variable back to the motor of the joint. I hope that this video was useful to you, don't be scared to play with the joints a bit more, because they can make your game a lot more realistic and fun.
If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye!